Welcome to Beth's Happy Home. I was recently sick and I had to take a course of antibiotics and because of those antibiotics they killed off the healthy um, bacteria that live in a human gut. Um, there are two things that were in my refrigerator that contribute to healthy gut bacteria. The first one is yogurt and I strongly recommend that you make it yourself because that way you know that the cultures are live and robust. Um, the second thing that I had in there is a dish that I love and it happens to also be really healthy for your gut biome and that is sauerkraut. It provides that wonderful gut bacteria but it also um, is hard to get from other sources um, in a condition where it will actually do some good for you. The reason is that heat kills off those healthy bacteria and so if you are um, buying it in a can, it's been heat processed. If you're buying it off the shelf in the grocery store in a glass jar, it's been heat processed. The, the bacteria are gone. But you're not going to get the health benefits that you're going to get from making it yourself. The second reason is it's easy, it's fun, and the product is amazing because the cabbage stays nice and crisp. It has a, a robust flavor. And I'm going to show you the process. I've peeled off these outer leaves from these heads of cabbage. I think these two big heads will be enough to fill this pickle jar that I use for my sauerkraut. And I'm going to rinse them really well, and then and rinse the heads really well, and then I'm going to start chopping them. Um, I'm going to slice them about as thin as a quarter. So you want them really finely sliced and um, chopped up so that they can pack into the bottle really well. All right, now that I've got those two heads all chopped up and it looks like a huge volume, but when you put, put it into the jar, you're gonna pack it as tightly as you can. And so the volume will go down a lot. At this stage, you're gonna add your caraway seed. And unless you really hate caraway seed, you ought to try it with the caraway seed because it's so good. It adds such a gourmet flavor. I'm gonna put two tablespoons so one tablespoon per large head of cabbage is about the right proportion of caraway seed. Okay, now, the important thing to know about uh, making sauerkraut is that you don't base it on volume, you base the measurements on weight because you need to get the right proportion of salt to cabbage in order for it to ferment correctly. Now, the type of salt I'm gonna use is pickling salt. And um, the reason that you use pickling salt for this, this is what it looks like. You can buy it in the canning section of your grocery store. But, but the iodide that's in that kind of salt um, is going to inhibit the fermentation process a bit. So this says I have 77.34 ounces. I think I'll change the unit to be, um, to be in grams and that way it'll be easier to get it precisely to that measurement. So it's 2,193 grams, so we'll call it uh, 2,200 grams. And so I want 2.5% of that weight will be my pickling salt. Okay, I figured out I need 55 grams of salt to um, ferment this amount of cabbage with the caraway seed added and add 55 grams of salt to the bowl and you want you don't want too much and you don't want too little so it needs to be in the range of between 2.25 or 2.5 percent of the total weight needs to be salt so that comes to it looks like about three tablespoons so i'm just going to mix this in sprinkle it over as, as spread it out as much as i can then i'm going to start stirring it because you want all of this cabbage very well coated in salt. And as you stir it, the salt is going to draw out the liquid from the cabbage until you get um, the juice in the bottom of the bowl. And you want that juice. It's necessary to have the, the cabbage itself completely covered by its own juice in order to ferment it. Now, you don't have to do this step, but I like to speed up the... Um, 
the drying out of the juices a little bit. And so there's nothing like pounding the sauerkraut a little bit to help to get that, those juices released from the cabbage leaves. And this heavy marble rolling pin with the handles taken off works really well. The only problem is that then I get the hole that goes through the middle of the rolling pin clogged up with cabbage, but I'll figure that out with a skewer after I'm done with this. But you can see just doing this part of the process, pounding it down, reduces the volume of the cabbage by a lot. And I like to do it this way rather than packing when I pack it into the glass jar just because I like to, to store my sauerkraut and ferment my sauerkraut in a glass jar. And uh, so I want to limit the amount of pounding that I do in the glass jar just because I don't want to put any risk of, um, I don't want to make any risk of breaking my jar. You can also use any kind of a food grade plastic container. Um, like you can get those gallon sized plastic containers with a, a screw on lid at the dollar store. Those are good for sauerkraut too. The only thing is that once you use it for sauerkraut, you're going to need to always use it for sauerkraut because it, the plastic will absorb some of the flavor. As you can see, this cabbage has been sitting for about 15 minutes and you can see this is all juice that the cabbage has produced from the pounding and also the salt has caused it to release all this liquid and that's what we're going to use to ferment the cabbage with. So I'm going to pack it into the jar now and then we'll just wait for it to ferment. Now there's no particular science to loading this into the jar. Um, the only thing you want to be really careful not to lose any of that liquid because you really have to have the cabbage covered in that liquid in order to get it to ferment because it's an anaerobic process. In other words, it doesn't use oxygen. You do not want oxygen in there. And uh, so it needs to be completely covered with liquid. So once you have it all loaded in, you're gonna pour the rest of that juice over the top because you want at least an inch and two inches is even better of the um, liquid on the top just to make sure that all of the cabbage stays underneath. Now you remember the volume that I started with filling this bowl, heaping up, but it's reduced a lot from pounding and releasing the liquid. And if I push it down like that, I can get the liquid to rise to the top. Hopefully you can see it. Once you've got it all loaded in and you have a nice head of liquid on the top, you're going to take some of those leaves that you reserved in the beginning, those great big leaves that are all intact, and just put them on the top. The idea of, of doing this is to keep the smaller pieces of shredded cabbage underneath the liquid, and so they, they form kind of a cap. Then take anything that is made out of plastic that isn't going to flavor the the cabbage or the sauerkraut and just put it on top of that so that when you screw down the lid it's going to push it down and it will start fermenting by tomorrow I will need to burp it which means just open up the lid a little bit let the gas from the fermentation out and then I'll close it up again and burp it from time to time as it ferments but for now it's ready to go ready to work its magic over here on my counter so I took the lids off so that you can see how this baggie that I put over the top will fill up with gas but right now it's flat and I've pushed it down so um, I'll photograph it once it starts to inflate. It's just sort of a fun process to watch. This is about five hours after I put this baggie on here. I added some rubber bands because I don't want the gas to leak out. I want to see how much it creates but it's already inflated it quite a bit. All right, it's been 80 hours now, and as you can see, this is not uh, inflating this. It stopped producing gas at about the 72 hour mark. And so I gave it a little while longer to see, just to make sure that it was not um, gonna produce any more. It's stayed nice and flat since about the 72 hour mark. 
So I'm going to put the cap on it, put the lid on it, put it in the refrigerator, and then I'm going to wait a couple of weeks before we actually eat it, um, just so that the flavors can blend and it can come up to its full um, wonderful quality. You also notice that the color has changed. It's gone to a pale yellow, but it will continue to change until it's almost completely white. Thanks for watching. Come back soon.